Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be doing performance mods on the Predator 420cc. Alright, so we're going to be doing a lot of different things to this engine today. So I'll put the times for the individual things right here. And those will also be in the description as well in case you want to go back to those. So we're going to start now with taking out the gas tank just to make room for everything else and I'm not going to be using this particular gas tank for my project I'm doing right now. All it is is four bolts on the bottom, this line right here and the gas line to the carburetor. And that right there is all you need to get the gas tank off. Now that the gas tank's off, we can move on to the exhaust here. It's just two bolts right there you need to take out. And that comes right off. I don't have a replacement performance muffler to put on this right now, but it's pretty self-explanatory. There's just these two pegs right there. You can pretty much put anything you want on there. You don't want just a straight pipe because these engines do run better with a little bit of back pressure. Okay, now we can start getting into the actual modifications. This is the stock air box. It's big, it's ugly, and we don't want it. There's three bolts to take out, two right here, and then one on the inside after you take this cover off. And this should slide right off. There are some hoses here you need to disconnect as well. Also down here, right below the valve cover, is this emissions box. This is, well, this hose right here on the top of the air box that connected to the top of the gas tank. That takes the fumes from the gas tank and filters them through here to put them back in the intake. And there's really no use for this, so we're going to get rid of it. And that just comes right out. These tabs it was attached to are tack welded to this heat shield down here. So you can just take some snips and cut those right off. All right, now that we have the air box off, we can get to the carburetor right here. I have this performance intake that I'm going to be using, but the only problem is this does not fit on to that directly. So we need an adapter. You can buy an adapter from this carburetor to that, um, intake, but I'm going to make my own because I can. Okay, so the adapter is completed now. I think it turned out beautifully. And what you need to make sure when you're um, doing this modification is that these three ports around there, smaller ports, aren't covered up. Because if they're covered up, it's not gonna um, work properly. Now on the Predator 212s, they have this nice thick metal gasket that goes on these pegs right there. But on the 420 just has this little paper gasket. And I'm pretty sure that even if you buy the proper adapter for this, it still, it still covers those holes up. So you need to buy one of these um, metal gaskets to provide enough spacing for those ports to get air. If you also happen to have, I think, a Honda GX240 or GX270, they have one of these metal gaskets in them that fits directly onto this engine and this carburetor. And I actually happen to have a GX240 right down there. So I'm going to take that apart real quick and show you what part I'm talking about. Okay. 
And once you take that off, you can see right here in front of the carburetor, there's this metal gasket. And as you can see, this gasket fits right onto this engine. So if you are lucky enough to have a GX240 or 270 laying around, you can use this um, if you don't mind taking this from that other engine. Okay, now I can put the adapter back on here. And now this filter will slide right on top of that. And then once you tighten up this hose clamp, you'll be good to go. Okay, now we have the intake on. One more problem though is that that air box had a little tab on it that held this choke lever down. So with the air box gone, there's nothing to hold the choke lever on. So what I think I'm going to do here is it's on this little post right there. So I'm going to try to drill that out um, with a little drill bit and then tap that. And then I should be able to put a little bolt down in there that goes through the top of the choke lever and holds that on. Okay, so the choke lever is on there now. It's on there nice and solid. I'm happy with that. The other thing I forgot to mention earlier is when you take off the air box, this port right here to the valve cover is left open. So I have this little breather filter that I'm just going to put right on there like that. And then I'll just make sure nothing gets inside of here that you don't want to get in there. It's just good to be sure of that. Okay, so now that we've modified the intake to put more air into the engine, we need to put more gas into the engine so that we don't run lean because we want the ideal air fuel ratio. So to take the jet out, first we need to remove the bolt by taking out this bottom bolt. Just like that. And then to remove the jet, all you need is a small flathead screwdriver and just stick it right up in here. And there's the jet. And what we want to do is drill out that hole in the middle, slightly bigger. Now we can just put this new jet back in there. And we can put the bowl back on. Alright, now we can get into the case here and I'll show you how to properly remove the governor. Now when you're taking this cover off, if this is like a newer engine, you can usually save the gasket in there. But if you've already run the engine for a while and that gasket's got gotten heat up and sealed real well, it's probably going to rip and you'll have to use a gasket maker. I did just run this engine for 15 minutes at idle before doing all this just to break it in. So hopefully I can save this gasket. And looks like I will be able to save that gasket. It came off real nice. Okay, so before I remove the governor, let me explain how it works. So this is the governor right here. And as this spins, these three little weights on the sides get thrown out and they push up this piece in the middle. And when that piece pushes up, it pushes on this lever right here. 
which is connected to this governor arm. And this right here is the butterfly valve that controls the intake. Right now, this butterfly valve is fully open. It's at full throttle. And if you'll notice, the throttle arm right here isn't directly connected to that valve. When I move this, that doesn't change. Instead, it's connected by this spring to the governor arm, which then controls the intake. So when you start, you put the on choke to start the engine. And when that starts up and the engine is at low idle, it doesn't take much effort at all for that little piece in the middle of the governor to push this arm and close off the intake. Now as you move the throttle up, it becomes a lot harder to move this. And because of that, the engine will go into higher RPMs. The problem with the governor though is eventually, once you get to a certain RPM, it'll still begin to close this off. And we don't want to do that because we want to go fast. So to begin removing this, the easiest thing to do is just take your snips here and cut the outer part. So now these pieces should slide out and we can remove this middle part. After you remove that, there's a clip on the inside that you can just take out with a screwdriver. You don't worry about saving any of this because you don't want it. Okay, it took a little while, but finally got that little clip off that sits at the bottom of the governor there. So after you get that off, you can just pull this whole thing right off throw it in the garbage and make sure you get this little washer that's behind it as well. You don't want to forget this inside of there. Alright, now that that's off, we can remove this whole governor arm because we're not using that either. Just like that. Then you can take this little pin out right here. And after you get that pin out, you can just slide this right out through the case here. Now you also need to be very careful not to forget a little washer that's up on top in here. It'll be stuck on there with some grease. Don't forget to take that out, because if you leave that in there and it falls into these gears, it will not be good. So now I'm going to tap this hole where the governor arm was at 3 eighths of an inch, and then I'll put a bolt in there to seal it off. And just make sure you make you get all of those shavings. It helps put like a rag in here or something just to catch everything. Now while I still have this opened up, I'm going to remove the low oil sensor down here. The reason I'm going to remove this is because on any like off-road car or go-kart, if you go if you leave that in and you go around a sharp turn or off a jump or something, the oil will move moves around inside the block here and the sensor will think it's low on oil when it actually it's not and kill the engine while you're riding. So, it's good to just take this out. And you remove this nut right here to take out this wire that's attached to the sensor. And then you can pull that whole thing right out. And also, you can remove this box, little box right here. This is the 
this is part of the sensor as well and just unplug the wires that it's attached to okay so I just put this bolt right in there where the wire was for the low oil sensor I just did the same thing I did for the governor arm this one I tapped out at 7 sixteenths and put a 7 sixteenths bolt right in there so that should seal that up nicely now we can put the engine cover back on Okay, so now what I did was took just a clothes hanger here and made another little throttle arm right here to attach to the valve right there. So that now that moves nicely. And the other problem that I had when after I took out all the governor arc stuff is originally you moved the throttle arm this way to go full throttle. But now since that's all gone, it reversed it and now you have to move it this way for throttle and idle is that way and the way the little cable clamps are set up this holds your throttle cable and it pulls on this little thing to pull it that way but that would pull it towards idle not towards throttle now that I've changed things so what I did was I took one of those throttle clamps that used to be right here and moved it over here and then with this spring the spring used to be up here and I moved that down here so that reversed everything and now it returns to idle and you pull it to throttle instead of the other way around so it's a little little bit complicated but it's not that difficult if you just have like a welder to put this on and then just a little hacksaw to cut that thing off but all in all this works out well now on to the next thing and that is the valve springs. Whenever you remove the governor from any of these small engines it's important to upgrade the valve springs to higher strength springs because w without that governor once you get into the higher RPMs the valves will start to float and eventually you will bend a valve and that just that just causes more headaches that you that are unnecessary. So I have new valve springs here these are 35 pound springs so we're going to take out the valve cover now and install these new springs. Okay, so now we've got the valves exposed here and what I did was I took the spark plug out and I've got the piston to top dead center now so that there's no tension on these valve rockers anymore. Now what I have is a piece of wood. You don't need a piece of wood, it just makes it easier. And you just put it right on here above the spring and push in on the valve rocker and then the push rods will come out and then that can free up the rocker like that. Now what you can do is back off the piston a little bit. You don't need to go all the way down but so you get that done. And then I have some of this foam cord. I don't know exactly what this is called, but I'm gonna feed as much as I can into the cylinder here. And the reason I'm doing this is because since the valves don't sit right up against the piston when it's at top dead center, this is a hemi head, it, when you push this in, the valve goes in as well. So once I put all this in, I can move the piston back up and all this stuff will press up against the bottom of the valves so that I can push in on the springs while the valve will stay stationary and I can remove the springs much more easily. Now what I'm going to do is take a set of vice grips and also you can take off these lash caps too that are on top of the valve there so you don't lose those. But I'm going to just clamp this onto the top of the collar there and push in so that the spring should come out just like that. And make sure you don't lose all those pieces. Also, it's good to cover up these holes down here where the push rods were. So these little 
pieces don't fall in there like that one did. It's not in there all the way though, I think I can get it out. So that's, that's something to be careful of. Okay, now that we got both of the old springs out, we can put the new ones in. Here's a comparison side by side. That's the old spring on the left and the new spring on the right. And you put them in using the exact same method, but it is a little bit trickier to put them in than take them out. Okay, so I just got finished taking everything apart because I dropped one of those little clips down this hole right behind there. And it went all the way down into the block. But I got it back now. I have them both in here. And I'm going to try to put this on just with the head sitting by itself. I think that'll make it a little bit easier. There we go. Finally got that. That only took a total of about two and a half hours to get both of those on. But now we can get everything back together. Okay, now everything's back together and we need to make sure the valve lash is still on. The valve lash for this particular engine is designated between four and six thousandths of an inch for both valves. So I have my feeler gauges here for four, five, and six thousandths. And so I'm just going to check them. The intake valve, that seems to be pretty good at right at five thousandths. Four fits in there nicely as well. The exhaust valve, however, is pretty loose. So I'm going to tighten down this one a little bit. Alright, I've got that set now. The 5000s one fits in there nice and snug on both valves. So I'm happy with that. We're going to put it back on the valve cover now and that should be pretty much it. Alright, and that is pretty much it. All that's left to do now is throw some paint on it to make it look cool.